Here we go. Our next guest is, uh, <laughs> he's a comedian. And uh, he's a comedian and an actor. We've seen him on uh, ABC's hit TV show, Home Improvement. Have you ever watched Home Improvement? <laughs> as well as uh, other roles on major motion pictures, such as Joe Somebody, I'll Kill You. <laughs> and a uh, nice <laughs> little family show there. And uh, The Santa Claus. So he's... he's He's done feature films. He's, he's been on uh, mainstream television. He's, he's a comedian. He loves God. He's using his talent for the Lord. He's very Italian. <laughs> he's very Italian. He's, he's a little off, you know. I, I, I call him the Prince of Brujut. I call him the, the Gavon of Gabagol. I, uh, <laughs> I call him Hapalon Quesadilla himself. He's here. <laughs> He's a really fun guy. He's a really good friend of mine. Would you please welcome back to TVN, Jim Labriola. There he is. One minute. Uh, look at this guy. Look how good looking this man is. Look at this. Is this a good looking? This is how I looked before the plane crashed 20 years ago. <laughs> I'm sorry. How are you? Relax, relax. What a crowd. New York. I love you. I love you. You know, on the on the sheet here, it doesn't it doesn't say where you're from. So where I'm from? Come on. As soon as I open my mouth, it's obvious where I grew up. I'm, uh, I grew up in Alabama. <laughs> what, a, what a banjo on your knee! <laughs> I grew up in a witness protection program. Uh, <laughs> my father said, "Pack get the cows. We're gonna get out of here." <laughs> and we're here. God bless you. Look at you. What a singer and talent. And I'm annoyed. Go ahead. <laughs> You know, we, w we went out to lunch this afternoon, and, uh... Can you tell? Yeah, you, you're, uh... <laughs> he's just, he's, he, he, he tells me this story about his friend of his. You come, <laughs> it's Christmas, right? He's just come to meet his friends. About one of his friends. <laughs> who, when he orders, he makes up things that don't exist. <laughs> and goes into an Italian deli or something like that, and you're supposed to know all this stuff, because, you know... Right, you go to Brooklyn, Brooklyn, you go to Italian deli, it just makes names up. He goes, yeah, give me uh, two pounds of the gabardella cheese. <laughs> but slice it thin. The guy's... <laughs> so, we got any gabardella cheese? <laughs> We're out. We don't have any gabardella cheese. But he's like, yeah. give me, uh, you got those pastries? Give me a dozen prosciutto buns. Yeah. Prosciutto buns? <laughs> Yeah, put extra sugar on it, too. Yeah. Was the buns. But well, if this man, I went to lunch with him. I watched him eat like a gavon. <laughs> he lost weight, OK? I watched you eat. Two chins came out of me. No. Like this. That's, I'm on a new diet, slim slow. Slim slow. Slim slow. Yeah. Huh. You're just going to sleep, aren't you? Yeah. No matter what happens. <laughs> You're waiting for Jesus to come back. All right. So, uh, you know. You, got, you come out here, you want to visit, visit some friends, right? I come here, as you can tell, I like dressed up for Christmas. I know, you got all dressed up, got your nice blue striped shirt. Beautiful stripes from my uncle, uh, out of respect, right. he's away. Well, did he and, take that uh, with him when he, got, <laughs> when he got out on parole, he took that same shirt, right? Well, no, he could take it, so I, I got it. it. Got but, it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you notice, that's why Italians, we wear black a lot. You know why? Because if somebody gets killed, we're ready. <laughs> yeah. you know, right there, the thought. How you doing? And... You know, a lot of these guys, you know, every time they drop over, it's like, what happened to Uncle Joe? Uh... You, you know what it was? You know, you grew up in the same neighborhood. I yeah. You grew up in Jersey. I grew up in Queens, New York, a place called Corona. <laughs> Corona, Queens. Three people. Good. Uh, <laughs> we got Harlem and Brooklyn here tonight. My God, we better get along. We can kill each other. Right. Right? <laughs> But you know what? I grew up in one of those Italian neighborhoods in New York where we had a lot of crime, but no one ever saw or heard anything. <laughs> right? right? I'm blind. I'm deaf. I didn't see nothing. Yeah. And no matter how you got killed, it was always a heart attack. <laughs> right? Okay. 
That's right. <laughs> Uh, you know, yeah. you could, you could, uh, there could be a guy laying here with an ice pick sticking out of his back. <laughs> the cops would come, all of us hanging out here. What would we say? I don't know, officer, it looked like a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, the guy grabbed his chest and fell on it 17 times. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not kidding. I go to a funeral about two weeks ago, I go, because they serve good food, right? Mm. So I, I go over there. And I go to pay my respects. There's like an eight-foot coffin. I'm not kidding you. Like eight-foot coffin. I look in, there was just a hand in it. <laughs> like, you know, nice. They put the makeup on it, right? Nice hand. <laughs> With a pinky ring on it, of course, right? So what am I going to say? Like, we're all phonies when we go to a wake. You ever notice we look better when we die, right? right. Say, oh, yeah, it looks good. Yeah. <laughs> Lost a few pounds, huh? <laughs> so... <laughs> So the widow, she's crying, oh, my husband, my husband. I said, what happened? Heart attack. <laughs> well, you know, if, if they ever find the body, they might find he had a heart attack. <laughs> so they might find wood chip when he had it. No. But, uh... So you're visiting some old friends, though, I'm right? visiting it's old fun. friends. It's nice. Right. Brings back memories, New York, when we used to shop in the back of the truck. And, uh... <laughs> We had a guy, we didn't have Santa Claus, we had St. Nicky. St. Nick. And, uh... St. <laughs> Nicky had a, you told me, he had a sled in the truck. Right. And, uh... Yeah, was, the, everything was out the back of the truck. Everything was the back of the right, truck. Right. Your dad would give you $3. Right. And, uh, you went and bought a bike or something. You probably, your neighbor's bike. They didn't know, they painted it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> they painted I had my neighbor's bike for three years. They wouldn't say no, 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 no. You don't want a heart attack, keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> But, and we had nice Christmases. We, we, I remember once we'd come down and we would have a nice little campfire going in the limb room and we'd roast uh, those uh, chestnuts there. And right, right, We didn't right. have a fireplace. That's, that was kind of weird. But, uh, <laughs> but then we would, uh, you'd wake up and you'd have a sock hanging in. You didn't know there was a foot in it. <laughs> you know, you, you just, you just, just none. Well, you know, I don't know if you can tell, but, you know, I'm, I'm looking at... I don't see too many Italians out here. I mean, there's... Oh, more, you got a lot of Italians. Yeah. One, two... A couple, three, three four... <laughs> And a lot of Sicilians. A lot of Sicilians. Uh, how, many, how many African Americans here today? Here, here we go. Now, I don't know about you, but it seems like the Italians and the blacks and the African Americans, all three of them, they all, let me tell you. <laughs> they all get along. Italians and the blacks are very, we have a lot in common. Well, you know, Sicily and Africa, they're just a little boat ride. That's another story. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta watch the Discovery Channel for okay. that. But blacks and Italians, we did. We, we, there was Italians in Harlem on 119th Street, and blacks and Italians got a lot in common. We like to wear hats. We like dressing up. That's right. You know what I mean? We like Cadillacs and Buicks. You know? <laughs> right? Go right along. Hey, if it wasn't for us, they'd be out of business. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. And blacks don't understand, but they, they, they admire the Italians for a lot of things, because back in the 30s, we originated the drive-by shootings. Originally. <laughs> We started that. We started that. We, you know, that's but we dressed first. up for it. We dressed up. They did. They got the tie. You still got that, 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 that. He had a nice three piece suit on, a hat. You know what I'm saying? Like these kids, the pants falling the down, and they, and they want to run away. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> get pants that fit. You never get caught. Right. But, but blacks of time, I right or wrong. We love, we love a lot of the same things. Right. We, we do. God bless. Are they coming towards me? Yeah, they're gonna, no, they're not Is coming the towards me. Is the audience coming no, towards that's me? That's all right. That's all right. They're right there. I mean, I gotta say, I'll let you know when Brooklyn they cross the Brooklyn and Harlem in the same room with me? Forget about it. What happened to the comic? Looked like a heart attack. <laughs> no, I'm not. I mean, I'm not. The guy... <laughs> so, <laughs> so what about, like, you know, I mean, you, you do a lot of traveling, though. A lot of right? traveling yeah. now. Uh, traveling is very different. I don't like it since this guy, Bin Laden, what was his name? Bin Laden, right? Yeah. You realize this one guy, this government we got is phenomenal. We could see a license plate from out of space. Right. Right? But it took us 10 years, 10 years to find this guy. Eight foot tall with a turban and a beard. We couldn't find him? Yeah, that right? makes sense. Let me tell you something. If this guy would have owed my Uncle Dominic a few dollars... <laughs> would have found him. That afternoon. Would have found him in three days. Right. <laughs> my uncle, when I went up to the, uh, <laughs> to the president, yeah, give me a Buick, some duct tape, and I'll take my own guys. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have read in the paper. I've been lying and found Buick truck. Hot the time. Hot the time.
<laughs> no, but it's different. It's different to travel. Oh. And I live, believe it or not, you know where I live now? Uh, do I guess? Take a guess. I, not in New York, right? No. <laughs> I live in Tennessee. I'm not kidding you. Jimmy Labriola in Tennessee. Can you believe that? Like All Tennessee. my neighbors think I'm in a witness protection program. Nobody bothers me. <laughs> Nobody bothers me. They won't walk their dog on my lawn. No, get off the lawn, get up. I sit out there once a week with a shovel. Yeah, how you done? <laughs> oh, what do I do for a living? I'm a farmer. <laughs> yeah, I bury things. Take a walk. <laughs> oh, yeah, you'll be easy to spot in Tennessee. That's for forget sure. about it. Yeah. So I go, now you go to the airports, right? It's, it's not fun to fly no more. Forget it. You got to go through. They got this thing. I call it the cancer machine. It's like this big, uh, the, like X-ray machine. It actually takes a whole X-ray of you, right? right. And if you don't want to go through it, they tell you, right? We got to pat you down. Yeah. All right. Now the last thing I want, okay, is some guy, some you know, weird government worker, coming towards me with two blue gloves and a weird smile on his face, okay? Yeah. And then they tell you, listen, if you're nervous and you don't want to do it here, we can do it in that little room over there. Like that's not going to make you nervous. Yeah, right. I said, listen, buddy, two are going in, but one's coming out, OK? <laughs> and it ain't the guy with the blue gloves. I can tell you that right now. What happened? It looked like a heart attack. Yeah, it fell. Okay. Fell down. Then they get these stupid guys now at the airport, the TSA guys. They want to check you out like that. Because this one guy two weeks ago comes over and he goes, excuse me, buddy, you got any firearms on you? I says, yeah, why? What do you need? <laughs> no sense of you. Tom, no sense. No, they don't laugh at stuff no. like then that. Then you no. get on the plane, they got those dopey announcements. I can't stand the announcements. Like, what's stupid? You ever, you ever see those stupid announcements? Ladies and gentlemen, a case of a water landing, a fly in Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> In case of a water landing, your seat cushion can be used as a... <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know about you folks, but when that plane falls out of the sky doing about 1,200 miles an hour and cracks into the water, I don't know what yours is going to be used for. <laughs> <laughs> And see the big guy sitting next to me? He's going to be a raft. Yeah. Right. Now, this is my favorite one. I got to do this comment, right? Now uh, you're right. in your nice coat seat on the plane. Nice and comfortable, right? <laughs> no, no more penis. There was three in that bag. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Can I get another soda in the communion cup? Thank you. Mm. Now you're in your nice coat seat, right, folks? You can all see me, right? right. This is regular, right? right? But this is comfort. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I'm comfortable now, I'll tell you that. In, in case you missed that, let me bring that seat up. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Regular? Perfect. Yeah. Woo! I hope we take the long way to Europe, honey. Yeah, I can't tell my life. It's great. It's great. <laughs> This is what I really think was stupid now, right? They get dramatic. Like, ladies and gentlemen, we're... <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we're about to land. For safety reasons, please bring your seat to an upright position. Because <laughs> we know, folks, if this plane cracks into that mountain doing about 800 miles an hour, you ain't got a shot if you're sitting like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> But you bring that baby up about an eighth of an inch. <laughs> Look, everybody's up at a yeah. You're fine. I love this audience. It's love. Break them up. So, uh, like, uh, where did you? When did you start to um, reinterpret life? I mean, the way you do. Because that's kind of what you do. You look at things that are normal and you make them extremely abnormal. Or actually make them make sense. I don't know. I'm just listening. Well, so, <laughs> like, when, when did you... How many people think we should have a show together? Am I, I right? I think so. I want to have a show with this guy. I love this guy. Right in. 
I'm sorry. Yeah, how I, can I, be, how I, do I, I look like, like a wooden Indian? I look like jokes. No, no. What kind of show is that? Oh, yeah, I'd like to look like a wooden Indian. Look at me. I look like uh, I don't even look Indian. What do I look? <laughs> like a nice, a nice Italian boy nice. from down the corner. How you know? From the corner. Right. Well, I mean, that, that's what they always say. The corner. What corner? So the corner right around there. Oh, what a guy. What a guy. You know where they sell the, you know, the the gabagool. The gabagool. Give everybody the malach just tonight. All right. The, the, the scafoot cheese. It's good to me. Yeah, yeah. No, but um... and then the the, the gogut sauce, right? You know, first of all, they were wiring me. Being Italian, I got me a little nervous. They were trying to wire. I tell me. you, yeah. I, it's hard for me to talk. I didn't want to talk to you. I wanted to let you know I was wired. Oh, see, so, so, you don't. Okay, yeah. oh, well. No, but I, I, and I want to say it's good to be back. This, I love this, New York, and 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 I love the trees that you put here. Beautiful trees. I, I didn't put they these. These were, were here. donated from yeah. my uncle Dominic. Right. I just want to. Uh, <laughs> They have to be back December 19th, unfortunately. <laughs> 19th. Yeah, the 19th. But uh, no, but I'm sorry. Okay. Because uh, like uh, another channel needs them for their Shut up, Christmas. I can't talk. We're on camera right now. We're on camera? <laughs> like the shot. But uh, So getting back to your life. Yes. All right. So well, when did you start to like express yourself in the way that you do now? Where people say, yo, you, 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 you a funny guy. I mean, you know, yeah. Uh, wow. I just knew I wasn't going to be a brain surgeon. Uh, <laughs> And I come from a very dysfunctional family. Fun. We're a very funny family, but we're crazy. And a big Italian family. We, we love to eat. Like all people, I love to eat. If you were under 250 in my family, they thought you had cancer. Right. <laughs> they saw me recently. When I saw the I went, oh my God, he's on chemo. What's going on with him? <laughs> <laughs> is, is he all right? <laughs> but I, I just, you know, you, 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 you know, it was the funny, ranking each other out in school and stuff, and it just became fun. My whole family's funny. My brothers, my sisters, my aunts, my uncle. They were all funny, and I figured somebody's got to make some money doing this, you know? So... So when did you start... What, you, so you were doing comedy? I mean, in clubs and stuff like that? Years ago, like, I well, did... How old were you when you started, like, professionally? About three. No. Three? No. Uh, professionally, I was about... Well, professionally, I'm going to say I was about 20 years old when I made my first... No, I was young. I was 18. I made my first $50 opening for a guy, Greg Peters. He was an Elvis Presley impersonator. And uh, I got 50 bucks. Yeah, Greg, Greg. You remember the name? He, he died of a heart attack. Heart attack. Heart attack. But uh, yeah. well, <laughs> it was 10 short. Yeah, that's right. It was 10 short. Yeah. But, uh, and, and I just, back then, in like the 70s and 80s, they did comedy everywhere. And I loved it. You, bowling alleys had comedy night. You'd be up there going, yeah, so the guy walked you here, ball stuck on alley seven. Yeah. And, but those are the places that made you good, you know? So, when, when, when did you get into acting? I mean, how, how do you get from doing bowling alleys, you know, aisle seven and all that stuff, and go wind that way out, out to, like, Hollywood and stuff? Well, I always, wa I always wanted to use it to get on television, the comedy. Right. It was always a big thing for a comedian was always to get your own sitcom, you know? That's what, your big thing. And I met Tim Allen. I don't know if you heard of him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's all right. He's nice. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he, was, he's, he, didn't, he, he didn't like being around me because I was really the funny one. But uh, is this going to show on television? Yeah. <laughs> this is a... He has a new show. I'm trying to get on it. Yeah, it's, it's... No. no, but uh, I met Tim. I opened for him in like 1988 in a club called Governors in, in Long Island, New York. And as they say, the rest is history. And we became best of friends. And that got me a part. I played a couple of bit parts on uh, Home Improvement before they created Benny. And then I did a show called Monty with Henry Winkler, who's the nicest guy in the world. He really is. And uh, that lasted four episodes on Fox. I played his uh, neighbor, Tommy DeFranco. What a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> I want to take this audience home. You mind if I take this to home? I'll take yeah. no. so, you got to wait till the show's over. Oh, I love these yeah. people. And, and then I just, uh, you know, I, it just spiraled into other parts. and. The sad part was I was supposed to have the spin-off of Home Improvement. Tim Allen was spinning us off as Harry's uh, Hardware. Uh. And, uh, but you know what? It didn't happen, and I'm not worth $400 million. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but you know something? I wouldn't have got saved. I realized today, and I wouldn't have met my precious wife that's worth more than any sitcom out there. And I mean that for sale. I mean that for sale. <laughs> and I would not lie. I mean, God. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> And uh, you take her with you everywhere you go. She's here tonight. Where's where she? No, she's not. She's getting uh, out in two weeks. She's getting uh, out in two weeks. Yeah. She's... <laughs> she hit the guy with the garbage truck, but it was all attack. That's right. And uh, <laughs> what's the odds of that? No, uh, actually, you know, I got saved like 13 years ago. Saved. Uh, so I, I got to figure out how, yeah. how did how did you get saved? Because not that not that you're <laughs> that bad, you know. But I just I don't know. I just don't picture you and you know. 
uh, something. I didn't either. I, I didn't either. I, I just, I, I would like to know how this miracle took place. <laughs> What happened? I don't know. The, huh? I, I, my wife, I should make a left. I made a right, and Jesus was there. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Just, <laughs> and, were, you watching, were you watching TV? No, and, and, and I say this again. This is why programs like this, TBN and all that, are very important. You got to support these things. Just like, you know, they got that public broadcasting with those weird programs on. You got to support that, right? <laughs> This is what you need to support because people like myself that are wondering out there and you don't know what's going on, you hear the message, you might laugh at it, you might shut up, but it's always there. Yeah. And you start not laughing at it as much, ah. you know? And, uh... I noticed you said not laughing at it as much. No, not anymore. still laugh, yeah, but not Paul, as much. Honest to... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, I, what happened is I, I met... This is how God works. This is an incredible story. I can tell it a thousand times. I was in L.A., I was doing good, I was out there, and I, and I flew over to Florida to see my friend Frankie, living in Florida, <laughs> and it was a girl. But, um, Funny, yeah, a guy yeah, named yeah. Frankie was, in Florida, yeah, right? Yeah, Florida. Right. So he was living there, and uh, I went to see him, and all of a sudden I was thinking about buying some real estate, and, you know, and this is like 18 years ago, and I go into this realtor's office, and I don't know why this lady goes, I know this nice lady, you should take her out. I said, I'm here for a wife. I mean, a lot, not what? a wife. Yeah, the backwards, backwards. <laughs> so, well, something like that. That's why I got married. You're, you're subconscious. Yeah, right. subconscious. So I go there, and honest to God, I, I, I call my wife up at the job, and she didn't even hardly know it. She just sold the house. Next thing you know, I took her to an Italian restaurant down in Florida, and a year and a half later, we got married, but that was the door opener for for Christ to come in our life because her sister used to take her to this church. We used to go to, these people were happy and stuff, you know? Yeah, they used to do all the plays and people had their hands singing the gun. I'm like, I gotta get out of here. There's something wrong with these people. They're happy and they put more than $2 in the basket. <laughs> and, and, and they had their hands up. You had your hands up at my church, you're getting robbed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I mean, you robbed somebody, but you left your 10% for God. Is this good? I'm leaving right here. <laughs> And, and so, to make this short story even longer, what happened is, <laughs> come and I go, I go, and we go to this church, and I always had to sit in the front, and my brother-in-law played Jesus, he had the long hair, and my sister-in-law, well, she sang and all, and then what, I, I saw this pastor talking about God, but not in the way I was used to, he talked about Jesus like, like he was his best friend, like he personally knew him. And it attracted me. And even though I made fun of those people and all, I wanted what they had. There was something there. So I kept coming back. And finally, one day I asked, the pastor asked me, uh, Pastor St Stephen Wright, I think his name is, God bless him. He asked me, would you like to go to lunch? <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let's go. We went to a Mexican he restaurant. you say yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, he lost $30 that day. <laughs> we went to a Mexican restaurant. And at the end of that lunch, I was saying the sinner's prayer, giving my life to Christ. I had no idea I was going to do that to Jesus. <laughs> so I tell people, when you go there, order the number six, the Holy Spirit and the fajitas. It's unbelievable. So Jesus got you over lunch. You know what? That's all it took. That's what it Just a good meal. Good. And, and then I went to this church, and I didn't even know how to read a Bible. Italian years evangelism. Ago. <laughs> yeah. Get over here. <laughs> Jesus loves you. I don't. Get over here. No. <laughs> But I look like a heart attack. He's playing on the ball team tomorrow. <laughs> no, so I go, and I go, and I started uh, reading the Bible. I didn't even know how to read. I didn't know who Paul was. I thought he's one of the Beatles. I didn't know who he was. <laughs> they, they, they had John. I was looking for Ringo, you know? And... It was in the back of the book. Yeah. yeah. And this guy comes over to my house, and honest to God, I started teaching... Wanted to teach him how to, you know, teach me how to read it, and then it became the living word. And I couldn't believe it, man, that... that you know, Paul, this, it started eating the words, came off the page. And I'm going to tell you right now, one scripture changed my life. Mm. One was Ephesians 5, 4, which said, no coarse joking, no foul language. And I'm like, how am I going to talk to my family? It's mm. <laughs> a good point. I have a hard time. But it changed me because I, I, I said to myself, how am I going to profess to be a Christian and do television shows that have profanity, go on stage and do my act? And from that day on, I said no, and I turned down work. I turned down things. The hardest thing, like that rich man put it down. But you know what? What was I putting down? You know? To me, it was my all. But I had, you know, we could say we're Christians and this and that. It's not what you say. It's what you do. You know? <laughs> it, it, it's just not... And, uh... You got to let your life do your preaching because people are watching. And, and wouldn't that, you know what? We, we, wouldn't that perfect? We're never going to be. But God moves mountains, but bring a shovel. That's my favorite saying. You got to do the work. It ain't like Domino's Pizza. They don't deliver you, you know. All right. 
Did you water Jesus? You know, you got to get out there and do the work. And I'll tell you what, that was one of the hardest three years of my life, putting my career down completely. So what, what was completely. kind of the response from some of the people that you worked with? I mean, obviously, you, you worked with a lot of big heavyweights, eh? Yeah, you know, some people, well, first of all, they're so into themselves, they didn't even know you're gone the first three years. <laughs> but the, a lot of people thought you're weird and you know, just the same things I thought. Yeah. And what's wrong with him? Why ain't he doing it? And this and that. And I had to do my walk, though. I had to put it down to, to be renewed, like clay. I mean, he just renewed me. And I'll tell you what, no matter how hurt you are down there, out there, you know what? Tough guy, this guy, that guy, throw all that aside, don't mean nothing. You got to surrender. This is the only battle we win by surrendering. Yeah. You know? That's a good point. Yeah. It's the only battle we win by surrendering. By surrendering. And then, you, you know, now I'm the people that they're laughing at. I was on the other side laughing at. We always laugh at what we don't know and all that stuff. But, and you know something, guys? And, and God's voice sounds more like my wife's every day. I'm telling you. <laughs> and, and, and you know, that was another miracle of my marriage because I blamed all my wife. You know, that misdirected anger. We all grew up in dysfunctional families. Anger, this and that. My mother being hit, this. And you know, I directed a lot of that anger towards my wife. And it took a lot of work. And my wife would look for things in the Bible to leave me, man. Mm. She would look for stuff like, oh, this, I, nah, it doesn't say it. And, <laughs> and we stood together. It's like a diamond, you know, that's got the hardest pressure in the world on it. And when you let that pressure off, there's a diamond. Mm. And that's what my marriage has become a diamond. No. And, and uh, look you know. at you. You're, such, you're so cute. But you know why? I, I really say this, man. I couldn't have done it without her. Oh. God really worked through my wife. My wife, Rhonda, she's just been everything to me. And uh, we've just celebrated 16 years, and that's a miracle. And half of those people in our video at our wedding are divorced now. Half uh. of them. We look at them. You know what? It takes a lot easier to run away, but you got to take yourself with you. Mm. No matter where you go, man, you're going. I can't run from me. I tried. But... It, you just stick together and get Christian counseling, and, and uh, it really it really works. What keeps you the, what keeps you busy now? What are you, what are you doing now? I mean, besides being here and visiting well, your friends with the you know, I do, Gabagool I, I, and all that. Yeah, Gabagool. Yeah. I do, uh, you know, I've been on uh, Governor Huckabee's show. I've been on a lot of Fox shows. And I, I, I did work for the, uh, like, the Teapot Express. Not as a political comic, just as doing comedy, because after they a while... They love you, you there. They keep inviting you back. I know. They, you know, a lot of these people, they do speeches, and it's like, oh, okay, another speech. Put the comic on. So, but I do cruises, different things. I, I really love to come out and lift up the body of Christ with laughter, because we need it. And I want to say this, too, man. Stop this in-house fighting. When I got saved, I didn't know there was... I thought everybody was Catholic. I didn't know they had Baptist, Boopist, Methodist, this, that, this, that. <laughs> and at 42... I called my pastor, Father Pastor, for three months. I didn't know what you called the guy, yeah. you know? Seriously, you know, we grew up as far... Yeah. And, and you know something? Well, you know, it's, it's the Boopists that the, do the that. The Boopists. The Boopists yeah. do that, right? You know what? Put all the names away. We serve... I am the way, the truth, and the light. Nobody gets to me. Right. Jesus. Not the, this, that. We're all Christians serving the same God. <laughs> Let's get together. Together. Stop this. Break the walls down. If we get together, who's going to stop us? You know what? I want to say Merry Christmas. Not Happy Holidays. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Christmas. Okay? Christmas. You know, you know. The holidays. Before, I mean, we, you know, we got a couple of minutes, but before yeah. you leave, I don't know if you read in the paper, there's like up in Connecticut, they can't say Christmas tree, they got to say holiday tree. Who are these mooks? You know, we need more heart attacks. That's what we need, more heart attacks. It's like saying, I, I, uh, it's like your birthday. <laughs> yeah, it's and, yeah, it's like your birthday, and you can't say who the birthday to. It's like, happy birthday to. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday to. <laughs> happy birthday, dear. Yeah. Oh, did you say his name? Uh, Get him uh, out. Happy Throw birthday out. to... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, like you get a cake. They hand out a... They bring out a cake. It's like, happy birthday to... Big question mark. <laughs> yeah, or, or, at the point, this guy over there. You know, the yeah, guy over exactly. there. So, I mean, uh, well, they can't say the we name. We gotta anymore. stop, That's crazy. man. We're becoming stupid. We're stupid. You can't call a terrorist a terrorist. What are we gonna call him, a bad guy? He's a terrorist. <laughs> no. You know what? Let him come to Harlem or Brooklyn. We'll show you what we do to Paris. All right? <laughs> what happened? I don't know. I look like a heart attack. Yeah. Just trying to, just trying to get his head started. <laughs> you know what? Merry Christmas. <laughs> Stop with this stupid stuff. Right. It's, a, it's, a, it's a government holiday. It's called Christmas because it's Christ's birthday. Okay? You don't want to say it? Don't say it. 
You want to be, you want to believe in Baba, boo boo, go believe in that. You know what I mean? Go believe in it. But it's Jesus Christ. It scares you. Why? Ooh, ooh, ooh Jesus Christ. Why? Because we ain't going to come over and burn your house down when you say that and all that? Don't keep messing with us because we, we might start doing that, okay? <laughs> I might start a whole movement. Do you ever, you ever minister to the troops at all? I went to Iraq. I went, the first time I went to Iraq was in 04. One really? of the greatest things I did. Yeah, for the troops. What was that like? It was wonderful. Yeah. It was like New York light. New York light? Yeah, it was New York <laughs> light. I felt more dangerous in New York in the 70s than I did there. <laughs> Remember, for 70s, you couldn't walk down 42nd Street unless you wore a gun. And, uh, gun. gun. Somebody wake him up. Please <laughs> get him a pillow. <laughs> Can we get a pillow table three here? <laughs> No, I want, I did the troops. Uh, the greatest things are our troops. That's what brings us together. Right. Is there's no... <laughs> there's no left or right. And, you know, when it comes to that politically, we got to support our troops that are out there doing their job. The men and women, God bless. I, I, I'm trying to start a, a, a tour now that I want to do to support, you know, pick, like, these organizations that help our troops, like Wounded Warriors and stuff, where these guys come home, they got no limbs, mm. they look... You know what I say? Take your own money over there. What are you doing with it? Take it. Give $5 million to each troop that, that lost a limb. They wouldn't even feel it. BP gave $20 billion for ducks. They got a little thing. I mean, I feel bad for the ducks. I'm not saying that. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? They got all that money there. They, we could have paid the war. Don't get me started. I and, start. and we could... And these people, they shouldn't be... They come home and they're broke. I don't care who's president. We always forget our troops. And we shouldn't do that. Amen. You know? We shouldn't do that. Jim, thank you for coming on tonight. I loved it. Uh, oh, stop. So thank you for coming on. Merry Christmas, <laughs> and God bless you guys, man. New York is the best. New York is the best. We have this uh, guy. But this guy loves the troops. I love the troops. Can we say one thing, too? You Chris say? is your producer. Is Chris here? Just take... Where's Chris? Just wave Chris. Chris Put the camera... Chris, Chris where are you? She says she's in the back somewhere. Chris! She's hiding. Chris, come on! She, I love this lady. I've been on the show four times. She's the producer. Just wave Chris. Merry Christmas, Chris. Where are you? Chris, Chris. Chris, yeah. where are you? Put the camera Chris, on it. Where is she? Yeah. Yeah, give her a nice... That's the producer of the show. Thank you. Get her face on it. She's shy. I love this guy. Look at his good look at his talent. Hey. And he works for the Lord. Here's a guy that could have had a phenomenal... Could have been the Sinatra. Don't tell me that. But he gives it... No. Nah. But he gives it to, to the Lord. Let me hear for comment again, because I love this guy. I really do, man. He's a real deal. You are the real... No, 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 it's all. We got a song for the troops. I, mean, I did a little song, and we had some, a friend of mine put the, uh, put the uh, 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 pictures to it. It's, uh, um, you, you'll, you'll hear it. It's just special for the troops. I want to play this for you. Jim, thanks for coming on tonight. God bless you. You're a man among men. God bless you.